Namaste, everyone. I'm Dr. Renee Vera, and welcome to our series, Voices of Ayurveda, featuring prominent Ayurvedic physicians across the United States. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Samesh Kashik, who's been uh, practicing Ayurveda for over four decades. Uh, he received his DAMS degree at the University of Kurukshetra and uh, received his Master's in Public Administration and Public Health from University of uh, Alabama in Birmingham and uh, also got his degree in naturopathy from University of Bridgeport in Connecticut and where he taught Ayurvedic medicine as well as uh, public health in University of Bridgeport. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Karshika, today for our series on Voices of Ayurveda. So tell us, uh, let's go back uh, to your childhood years, how they impacted you and molded you uh, to this journey of uh, healing and rejuvenation. Namaste and thank you, Dr. Mera, for inviting me. Childhood uh, started with Ayurveda. I remember uh, as a child, four, five, six year old, playing outside, getting hurt, and you come inside, and immediately mom will soak a um, cotton swab into warm turmeric oil and put on your wound, and then give you a glass of uh, hot milk with a teaspoon of turmeric. And from there, realize that this is the medicine. So at that time, we didn't realize this was a medicine given to us, but as I grew up, we realized this was part of a daily practice every day. We get hurt, you get turmeric, you get some stomach ache, you get a ginger uh, water or ginger tea or uh, something with ginger or giant tea. And so those basically beginnings start from here. And as I grew my interest into herbs and interest into Ayurveda developed even more. Parents always know more about their children than children know themselves. So <clears throat> my parents realized that he has so much interest. And it was actually their journey when they uh, kept uh, kept uh, convincing me that this will be a good field and you will be a good vet. So uh, I grew up in a small village, uh, Fatehpur, Fatehpur Pundri in uh, district Kukshetra near Haryana. And later on I went to, after pre-med, went to uh, Kukshetra and the next seven years of life grew there in that uh, holy city where I learned Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, growing up there actually was uh, not only knowing about Ayurveda, but also later on, as I, as you know, one of the quality of a good Chikitsak or Ved is also spirituality. And uh, being there uh, grew my interest into more into spirituality and made me a person what I am now. That's very, very interesting. Uh, what part of Ayurveda is uh, that is very dear to you? Well, the entire Ayurveda, basically, the the prevention part. Basically, Ayurveda not only is a is a way of life, but again, if you live that life, it makes you a perfect human being, a healthy human being. And when we always look at the balance in the body, and we always say some dosha, some agnesha, some dhatu, malikriya, but basically keeping the balance not only inside the body but outside with the environment, with your surrounding, with the people you know. And that balanced mind, balanced body keeps the uh, entire uh, individual balanced and healthy. But the most uh, important was the prevention. So uh, basically an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So if you are preventing, if you eat healthy. So in the Ayurvedic treatment, we always look at the uh, your Ahar, Vihar and Aushadi. And uh, Ahar always comes first. So if we start thinking about before putting anything in the mouth, if you think about it, is it going to help me? Is it going to nourish my body? The disease doesn't start. And more than that, I also think people who are putting a lot of things, cosmetics and creams on their uh, on their body, always tell them, if you can lick it, you don't put it in your body. Eventually, it gets into the same place, into your into your blood capillaries and eventually to your entire body and the, and the nervous system. Uh, so the prevention and the diet actually is the priority. I think that that's feeding a whole person as an organic whole and prevention is so very important, especially uh, in these times, you know, when the cost of healthcare is exorbitantly high. So prevention is uh, very, very important. Prevention is the key. Prevention, prevention and eating a holistic lifestyle, that's so very important. And that's that sort of argument, I think, was also very dear to my heart. Um, you know, you see a lot of patients uh, in New York as well as uh, right now, I think, upstate New York. 
as well as Connecticut. What type of patients uh, come to you? So that's a, actually, a, a, this is the time of Ayurveda. When I came here in 80s, uh, roughly 67% of the individuals or adults who were sick, they were suffering from infectious diseases and roughly 16.7% had uh, basically chronic disease. Trend has reversed completely in 30 some years. Now what we see 75 to 80% of adult population have at least one chronic disease and roughly 50% have two or more. So in chronic disease, if you look at, doesn't matter what they are, looking at asthma, bronchitis, autistic children, you can look at ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, arthritis, any heart disease, cardiovascular disease, basically looking at um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, arth- uh, and, and cancer, uh, HIV, there's no cure. It's only symptomatic treatment. So Ayurvedic medicine actually goes to the root cause of the disease. So looking for the root cause and then we treat the root cause and also try to reverse the condition. So that actually, what that's what I see. Majority of my patients, if I say 99.99% are suffering from chronic disease. A, a big part of that actually is the cancer patients who are taking chemotherapy or radiation therapy and, and also discussing their case and under the care of a uh, endocrinologist. And so they come for sportive treatment uh, but in generally, most of the patients are chronic patients who have been suffering from disease for many, many years, and this is the place they get the relief. And um, what type of treatments uh, do you have in your practice? Basically, when somebody comes, we have a intake, a consultation. Again, uh, there's a big part of that. In consultation, we have counseling also. So we always look at three ways of uh, treatment, uh, medication, meditation, visualization, always think positive. But the treatment starts with the, again, the ahar. Uh, I take the complete history of the, on their diet, what they usually eat. And I tell them to bring me a, a food chart uh, or dietary intake for about a week. And based on that, I have an idea what kind of food these individuals have been eating. And so we can't make a drastic change. All of a sudden, if somebody is eating pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it can't take pizza away from them. But we add something as a green leafy vegetable on the side and keep growing that portion so the pizza portion will decrease. So ahar starts from there. Second thing, I always ask them their childhood, their teenage years, and their adult life. And my purpose of knowing that is where they grew up, what kind of house they were living in, what was their environment, and what kind of work they do. Many of the patients we are seeing now are coming with occupational background, which have been using uh, toxins. So in that case, they then at that point, the detoxification becomes very important. And so the punch karma becomes important. So in generally, uh, again, the treatment is all Ayurvedic, more herbs, uh, but again, it always starts from the diet. Reason being not only it is easier to get from the diet, but also the food grown locally works better with the person. If we look at the Pancha Mahabhu theory, basically looking at the ether or space, obviously Akash and Vayu and and, uh, and uh, Agni, uh, Jal and Prithvi. So in that case, we are looking for the same element if I am living in this area and the air here which is inside me is also sporting those plants and the vegetable and the fruits. The heat outside inside is sporting me and also sporting those the growth of those plants. So basically the environment where you are living, locally grown food and vegetables uh, are always, always beneficial. So, uh, so, and then we look at the Vihar, the lifestyle. If somebody is complaining about insomnia and they are sitting and watching TV until 2 a.m., that needs to be changed. Uh, so it's a combination of the, of the diet, of the lifestyle, and then comes the Oshadi, which are uh, the supplements which are made here in the U.S. because we had a lot of issue from the supplements coming from India because, again, the testing was not that adequate and the heavy metals are so high nowadays. So we want to make sure whatever we're giving to our patients is safe and is tested. So uh, the combination of all three. And you also have a Panchakarma treatment in your office? Yes, we provide a complete authentic panchakarma and with that we also have added 
some treatments, some naturopathy, for example, something we call constitutional hydrotherapy. So hydrotherapy is, is used. We also use ozone therapy, which actually came very handy, uh, especially with chronic disease, patients with Lyme disease, patients with cancer. And again, as you know, the cancer um, loves uh, three things, low oxygen, low heat, and a lot of sugar. But hates two things, uh, oh, heat and the uh, um, heat and oxygen. So in the ozone therapy, not only person is sitting in a, in a steam chamber, get a lot of heat, so basically hyperthermia artificially. So heat and also a lot of ozone, which through with, which it turns into oxygen in their body. Uh, so that became very, very useful. Same thing in the Lyme patient. And Lyme cases are very high in the Northeast. But in generally, uh, any person who have a chronic disease, what I found, they are not only oxygen level, usually low, but also their temperature is low. So I always tell individuals, God made you hot, stay hot. So 98.6 degrees in the temperature of the body actually is very hot. And people are used to eating cold food, uh, frozen food. People love ice cream even in the winter. And uh, again, they will have sandwiches or they start their day with, with the cereal and cold milk. So we always tell them basically support your body by the way it was created by the creator. So adding heat, always start your day with warm food, warm milk, golden milk is very, becoming very popular. So there are so many things which we can do with Ayurvedic treatment, but basically uh, with all the therapies uh, we provide, we always suggest one thing, uh, support this body by, by adding heat to this body, also nourishing, which are warming food and also thinking positive. We start off the day with warm food, uh, even like stewed apple or stewed pear, you know. Yes, room temperature, start with that one. And then basically if you take a, uh, if you are somebody who likes milk, then take a uh, cup of go or of glass of milk. Uh, again, if you can put uh, saffron and, and turmeric uh, and then ground almonds uh, in that, that probably will be nourishing. And if that, personally, uh, what uh, I do, uh, sometimes it's not possible. I know everybody's busy. Uh, we always have uh, leftover uh, lentil or dal from the previous night. So basically, I just warm it up and add a uh, tablespoon of ghee. And that starts my soup. And so I start my day with the soup. Uh, never cold, even not in the in the winter. So I'm a pitta kapha. So I don't want my kapha to aggravate. Especially this is the time of uh, springtime. Is the pollen started already. So for that is very, very important that we have these soups. A lot of ginger is used. Uh, so, so basically that is the first thing. Always start your day with something warming, especially after almost 12 hours of fasting. Intermittent fasting becoming popular. But in generally, we fast every night. When you have your dinner at 6 or 7 p.m. and your breakfast is 8 a.m. in the morning or 7 a.m. in the morning, that is a long fast and at that time when you are starting adding something to your bodies had to be nourishing and warming. One pearl of wisdom that you would like to share with your patients from Ayurveda. So in the strange thing is that Ayurveda is such a complete science and it talks about everything in life including the patient. And uh, what Charak says is that the patient should be somebody who listens, who is obedient, who follows the order and, and also is, is willing to basically get better. So their passion should be to bring this body back to normal. And considering that in mind, obedience is something I would like to tell. So I encourage the patient, especially here in the West, to do your research. Make sure that the physician or vet that you are approaching, you're thinking about going to, you do research, ask about their education, ask about their background, make sure they are well educated, they have enough experience, uh, and also they have seen many, many patients. So ask all the questions, and again, many people in my case bring a folder because this patient is dealing with only one disease, and that's all their concern is. So they will bring a big folder of all the research they have found on Google or different places. And so once you have all your research done, bring your questions. Ask the as as the vet and or as the doctor all the questions, but once your questions have been answered, once your doubts have been removed, then one advice is surrender yourself. 
let the physician handle let the where they give you all the instructions of what you should eat what you should not eat how you should basically what time you should go to bed so we believe in the and we know the circadian rhythm so let the rhythm of nature follow you or you follow the rhythm and so you live that life which nature wants from us not to think that your favorite tv show is coming at two o'clock in the morning or you think or you found on google that eating this kind of food will be good for you no your thinking is done before before making the decision to go to that vet or the doctor once you are there then only thing you should be thinking about what is doctor telling you write that take notes and follow the instructions because journey which you want to follow be of healing is now became the journey of your doctor and then let it work but as a team let your vedd or our the physician be your leader be your guide and you just follow the guide directions very very important um also on a tangential note i know that you also have medical camps in north india that are free and uh, helping people to get back to healthy lifestyle yes definitely so we started that uh, like i said the, the charaks have these uh, qualities of uh, vedyas and one of the quality actually is the is basically uh, the spirituality uh, purity and uh, so in that case uh, following those uh, messages footsteps following the journey uh, 2008 we started medical camps actually medical camps started here in, in new haven connecticut in 2006 and then if you know we were mm, Uh, guided told and then basically we realized that the place we have come from there are so many individuals who do not have medical care they cannot afford for some reason so we started going to india in 2008 uh, and then every year we go two or three times offer free medical camps in rural areas started with haryana because we knew the area some part of punjab uh, some part of up bihar and then we went to orissa Uh, West Bengal. So next, uh, the last year we were supposed to go to Madhya Pradesh, couldn't go because of COVID. So actually, we are thinking about restarting. But now we are actually telling individuals. So, so it's a lot of temples in India or places of worship which were uh, patient people who are not coming because of COVID. So we are sending a message: any of these families, any need help, uh, you contact us. We can do a Zoom call. We can do a WhatsApp call. And once we uh, look at the person, we can't. feel the pulse but at least tongue can be examined uh, and then we will uh, make sure we send them the supplement so in generally when we offer that medical camp many of my friends who are my classmates they come to help um, my wife is also a naturopathic physician and so she has been practicing ayurveda with me for many many years and now she has separate practice our children are in the same field uh, my daughter is also a naturopathic physician younger one is in the final year uh, son is also in ayurveda actually he's a biomedical engineer by background and then went for public health and got his interest into so the whole family is is devoted to that journey so we go there to offer something which we have and which we can for many individuals who are not as fortunate it is not a favor to anybody we are favoring ourselves by giving ourselves that 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 opportunity to serve others so if anybody who is listening and knows uh, please contact us we will be there uh, or we if we not there physically we can we can provide help and that has been a great journey you say the conditional coverage is so very important in our lives and we see a lot more so yes it's good that you are having these annual medical camps for the underprivileged lastly what would be your advice to our really practitioners who are just starting out in the united states this is a land of opportunity uh, one thing is you be confident in yourself the education you are getting from your ayurvedic college or the school have so much information sometimes we doubt because we run after the science this is not scientifically proven what we find after coming here our 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 ancestors our rishis have written uh, the information put together for us into the sainthas that is much beyond uh, and much more than what you find in scientific evidence so what we are finding here if you're looking for research you're finding what is written there was so accurate so just follow that later on you can add science to that so basically if somebody is not is having difficulty handling the stress or not sleeping and we says well take us for example uh, ashwagandha 
well, now the science is finding that it's going to increase your certain level, it's going to produce melatonin, it's going to be providing so much, it's a great adaptogen. So trust that, that has been tested over and over and over, and after the many, 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 many thousands of years of tests, that is still existing. Follow that. So one that's one thing. Second thing is, look, when, you, when the Turk mentioned the four main or four chatushpad of the, of the healing and Ayurveda, they are telling the physician is the main uh, part of that. Again, that is the that is the bulk of it, because depending upon the knowledge of the physician, depending upon the practical knowledge and, and also the education of the experience of, of the physician, depending upon the purity of the physician, everything is all the outcome is in, in his hands. So basically, if you are pure and just trust in your own and believe in your own self and follow the instructions provided to us by our rishis, uh, then you have, have no problem. Other thing is that uh, continue your studies. The reason being once we have BMS or MD, uh, don't think that is going to just, just end of it. Education is learning. Every person who comes, make sure you're a good listener because many times our patient tells us the root cause of the disease. Uh, so in that case, when they are telling you Listen and find a some reasoning what could be happening. I had a patient with the with with, with the Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, no treatment for that. Patient had been to uh, UConn and 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 Yale, and he comes and uh, thinking that there's nothing. He was told you have six months to a year to live, and he comes with a big folder of all the research and all the medications they have taken. So I asked the history what you have done, and he tells me I've been going to doctor. No, no, what you were doing before. And he says, I was a supervisor. Supervisor where? So finally he tells me he was working in a molding plant which makes the siding of your house, plastic siding. So my next question was, were you using the, the protective equipment? He said, no. Well, found later on, his lungs had so much of the plastic fumes that this toxicity of that caused the condition. And that's where we started detoxifying. So of course, punch karma came handy. And now we have so much research with us. We are finding out there are many other supplements which have now extracts of the Ayurvedic supplement. And we use extract and and slowly, 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 his body function, especially his upper hand, upper extremity was not working. They start working and it was an amazing result. So this is just one example. There are so many. Uh, so in even with our background, the continuation in our learning process should continue. We should do more research find out what others are doing, networking. And that's why the associations like Optum, connecting with other people. And because through these associations, we'll find out other people who are doing research, we connect with them. If I'm doing something, somebody else will find out. If they are doing same thing, something, I will know from them. So so at, at joining our associations and, and basically working with them and connecting with other people in the group so that we can serve the humanity we are here, many individuals are sick, like I said, this, basically there are so many individuals who need our help, especially chronic disease is so high. And especially this time of COVID, we see the importance of the immune system. And uh, what we realized that the Ayurvedic supplements worked so well uh, that not only it was able to prevent many of the patients by boosting their immune system from getting sick, but many who actually were infected, which actually treated them. Uh, of course, again, CDC said there's no treatment. And so we tell them uh, we are boosting your immune system. It worked. Uh, so my advice would be, uh, even though you had a great knowledge, trust in that, but continue more and more and more and connecting with other 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 physicians or Vedas because we do need more research. And uh, so like I said, we have a clinic in Fairfield, Connecticut, and we have one in Cross River, New York. Uh, the New York City has been closed temporarily for because of the COVID. Uh, but again, anything we can do for any of the patient, any physician Vedda, who are here or who are in India planning to join us here in the US uh, is a great place to work. But one more thing, it basically, uh, you need to know our limitations. If something is beyond and outside of our scope of practice, then we also need to learn to, uh, to refer that to somebody who can handle them well. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Samesh Kashik, for your valuable insights. I'm Dr. Renee Mera. Thank you so much for watching.
and uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and share our videos. Thank you.